Arnie and Peter decide to go ice fishing. They head out, find a nice spot, cut a hole in the ice, and stick in their poles. Suddenly, a loud voice booms from above. There are no fish here. Arnie and Peter look around, look at each other, and look up. They don't see anyone. Arnie and Peter, they, they move. They say, I suppose we better move, says Peter. Let's, let's get up and find another spot on the ice, cut a hole, stick in their poles. And they had hopes of finding some fresh walleye. Once again, the voice booms from above. There are no fish here. They look around, look at each other, then look up again. They don't see anyone. We best find another spot, says Arnie. So they gather up their equipment again, choose another promising spot on the ice, cut a hole, and stick in their poles. Once again, the loud voice from above, there are no fish here. They look around, look at each other, then look up, seeing no one. Peter calls out, God in heaven, is that you? The voice responds, no, this is the skating rink manager. There are no fish here. <laughs> I couldn't resist. Often we wake up in the morning, when we, when we wake up, we're feeling pretty peaceful, humming along. Some of us meditate, some of us medicate, some of us have coffee, and some of us have a smoothie. We take a shower, we're really feeling good as we start our day, and then we turn on the news. Then you hear, Politicians calling people stupid, racist, losers. You hear words like narcissist, fascist, immoral, amoral, bully, abusive, arrogant, intimidating, ethically bankrupt. You hear conversations about greed and corruption that's impacting consumers. You hear about layoffs, drive-bys, suicide, mass shootings, murders, sexual and child abuse, fires, hurricanes, and floods. Do you ever ask yourself, where is God? Do you ever ask yourself why we as humans seem to haven't evolved? Do you ever ask yourself how you can become immune to this suffering and the pain you feel when you read the news? Or do you want to feel more compassion and find solutions? Growing up, we are taught that bullying and name calling is wrong. We are taught that killing, injuring other human beings is wrong. We are taught that greed and corruption is wrong. We begin to question why some of us have no moral compass. What has happened to a society where money, power, and greed trump decency and goodwill to our fellow humankind? No pun intended. <laughs> we can take a quick look back at the allegory of the Garden of Eden, man's beginning where the belief in duality is said to have started. This allegory sheds some light on how, why and how we feel so angst and so much sadness when we look at the news. We are into judgment of appearances. The allegory says that there were two trees, the tree of life, pure consciousness, and the tree of knowledge of the good and evil, self-awareness and judgment. When we look at this allegory of Adam and Eve from a different perspective, we begin to gain, gain some insight into how their belief in duality 
cause suffering by judging everything as good and bad. This was a result of them choosing to leave kingdom consciousness. They had choice, free will, and they were warned that if they ate of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, that there would be consequences. They could have chosen to stay in a state of pure consciousness, the kingdom, or, le or to leave the paradise state. They chose the latter. I believe this represents how humankind became fractured, leaving the sense of wholeness by listening to that other voice. What voice are we listening to today? At any moment, we can stop today eating from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. We can stop listening to and supporting bullies, liars, greed, and avarice. We have choice. We can choose from moment to moment where we want to hang out, where we want to vibrate. Do we want to live from a state of duality, opposites, separateness, or do we choose to live from a place of pure universal consciousness where there is no other self, no they or them, no nationality separateness, and no prejudging others. We can choose to co-create a planet of light and wholeness, knowing that as Ernest Holmes says, there is only one mind. There is no such thing as your mind, my mind, God's mind. There is only one mind in which we all live and move and have our being. We can choose once again to hang out in the kingdom. In Luke 17, 21, it reads, nor will we say, look, here it is, or there it is, for behold, the kingdom is in the midst of you. Are you ready for the kingdom? The kingdom is a vibration of love and forgiveness. You may be thinking, oh, I've heard this all my life, and now here it is again. This time, let's analyze why this is a way of life of absolute joy. Ernest Holmes also said, we must seek to realize the spiritual universe regardless of any conditions which appears if we would embody the greatest good. When we choose to align with Christ's consciousness, knowing that God is in us, we let go of judgments, blaming the news for our moods, blaming our history, our parents, our significant others, or our jobs or professions. And let's throw in the weather for good measure. This is a conscious decision to make. You can choose to actualize the qualities of the creator by embodying and knowing that the kingdom is within you now. All the qualities of God are within you. So we can stop thinking that it is in some far off place or that we can only have it when we acquire something that we desire or we can only have it when we die. Right where we are, God is. Christ is not a person on a cloud that's coming in the future. The Christ consciousness is your true self. Align with it and exemplify your creative expression and be who you truly, truly are and recognize that you are God in form. You are the manifestation of God on this plane. And as we recognize that we are God right here and right now, the qualities of God pour forth. We choose the high road. We demonstrate love 
and express Christ consciousness with everyone that we come in contact with. We must care about each other, regardless of race, color, gender, gender preference, nationality, region, or religion. This is the loving vibration to carry. Imagine it as contagious, affecting everyone that we come in contact with. And those who are affected, taking this love vibration and sharing it. Everyone then demonstrates Christ. We already have the kingdom within us. This is how we manifest the kingdom on earth. We see it and we be it. Knowing this, we can no longer hurt each other to feel safe, shoot or kill or bully another to feel good about oneself, or steal or cheat another because we are coming from a place of lack. We can embody the knowing that we are all cut from the same cloth made in the image and likeness of the creator. Then we understand that to hurt, harm, rob, or kill another is essentially harming a part of ourselves. Ignorance is why we do it. Ignorance of our divine nature. Ignorance of our divinity. Once we wake up from the illusion of separation and we understand this, that there's no you or me, there's no they or them, no oceans or land that separates nations from us. We are all one body. Do you want the kingdom consciousness? It requires a shift in our perspective. The way we view everything in the grand scheme of things. Do you want to get rid of that state of angst, annoyance, depression, and irritability? Let go of hate, fear, and stop judging people, situations, or the world's illusions of seeming chaos. Webster says, bad news is an unwelcome thing, a, or a person, or trouble. Remember, everything is in harmony and balance, even though it may not always appear that way. Although some circumstances are not our preferences, they are still working for us. When we feel uncomfortable, irritated, or overwhelmed, instead of trying to remove yourself, pause for a moment and ask, how is this serving me? When we can be in wonderment of how we are expanding and emerging into deeper levels of ourselves, we remove ourselves from fear. This doesn't mean that we won't have uncomfortable moments, but we won't have to take them on like a backpack. Our higher selves know that everything is always changing and expanding for our good and the good of all. The God part of us knows that the entire universe is in divine order and evolution is taking place even when we can't see beyond appearances. A great example of this is the sun. It shines even though it may be obstructed by clouds or overcast conditions, yet it is always and ever present somewhere. I challenge you to see through the fog and realize that your true nature is divine. We must see through personality, ego, the seeming insanity, to the perfection of who we are. It's time to let go of the mental and institutional structures that have kept us ignorant of who we truly are. Divine beings having that spark of the divine. We can now see how some clergy and politicians seek to control the masses for money, 
power, and greed. It is done with fear. And by keeping people uneducated, poor, and unhealthy. I came from a church background that told me things like, heaven is a place outside of me with streets paved of gold and pearls. It's only available to me when I die and only if I was saved. I asked them, you know, inquiring minds want to know. I said, save from what? Save from whom? I told them that I never felt separate from God. They were so very frustrated with all my questions. So I left before I got the boot. <laughs> our sense of separation is in our own thinking. Do not accept separation as your truth. Ernest Holmes says, such is the power of right thinking that it cancels and erases everything unlike itself. It answers every question, solves all problems, and is the solution to difficulty. Let's heal our thinking today. We are divine, and we are divine mind, uniquely individualized. God is not separate from its creation. We are never separated from the creator. Inherently, we are good. We make mistakes and we learn and correct our course. When we change our thinking, we change our life experiences. We don't have to experience hell on earth. We can use our free will to take the high road and experience the kingdom. Anger and resentment, unforgiveness, fear and hatred are poison to the body. We must let it go to experience the kingdom. Remember, absolute love cast out fear. Who do you want to resonate with? Ask yourself, do you want to hang out with the bullies, the liars, the thieves, the corrupt, or do you want to choose the path of light and love? Decide now whom you will serve. Will you continue on a path of judgment, hate, prejudice, and anger, or will you be a light unto the world as peace, love, and forgiveness? You can demonstrate the qualities of God. Are you still looking for God? God is in all. God is all. God is over all. God is through all. Still looking for God? Look within. Peace and blessings. Thank you. Thank you. Let us pray. Turning within to the true essence of who we are, divine emanations of God, all connected on the seen and unseen side of life. We know that there is only one of us here expressing in myriad forms as one mind one power. I know that I am one with the infinite creator of all life. I absolutely know that everyone here and those who are not are absolutely expressing the divine as only they can. And just like a garden of many flowers and colors and variations, we too are ideas in the mind of the creator. We are made in the spiritual likeness of the creator, having a spark of the divine. I know that we embody this and we choose to live the qualities of God as love, joy, peace, tolerance, wisdom, and integrity. We see through appearances. We absolutely know that this planet is evolving even now. 
And through its growing pains, we know that light is there, just as the sun is always there. Love is there. We bless our church community, all churches, synagogues, temples, mosques, and ashrams, all pass to the realization of Christ consciousness. We bless our families, those who were displaced by fires and other experiences of nature. We know that God is right where they are, regardless of appearances. There's always opportunity in every experience. We stop judging and look with fresh eyes. I am indeed grateful for our church community and know that it impacts the world one person at a time. This ripple effect is raising consciousness and there are so many beneficiaries. For this and the light vibration that is enveloping this planet, even now, I give thanks. And I release these words to the law of mind and spirit, knowing that it is so, and so it is, and together we say, amen.